The rate of a chemical reaction depends on the details of how the reactants convert into products. And this is a series of steps known as the reaction mechanism. One of the main reasons we make kinetic measurements in the first place is to gain a detailed understanding of a reaction mechanism. And this depends somewhat on our measurements, but also on prior knowledge about mechanistic steps that have been observed in the past. So what we'll focus on here is the connection between chemical kinetics and reaction mechanism. As you get to more advanced courses, you'll start to actually see the molecular level details of elementary steps in reactions, particularly organic reactions in your organic chemistry courses. Let's start though by defining what we mean by a reaction mechanism. A reaction mechanism is a detailed listing of the order and kinetics of the elementary steps that result in the transformation of reactants to products. And mechanisms are hypotheses, and this is an important point. Reaction mechanisms are always provisional and always undergoing slight alterations, especially as computational chemistry has advanced, and we now trust computers a lot more to give us useful mechanistic information. One of the terms here that may be a little ambiguous is elementary step. What do we mean by this? Well, we've kind of already seen an elementary step in the video on reaction coordinate diagrams. This is a reaction or reaction event that occurs in a single collision between reactant molecules. So there is one transition state associated with an elementary step. It corresponds to one sort of hill on a reaction coordinate diagram, if you like. Now, in energy valleys on a reaction coordinate diagram between the reactants and products, we find observable stable species that are known as intermediates or reactive intermediates. And these are species that are produced in one step and consumed in another. So they don't correspond to the reactants or products, but show up kind of in the middle of the mechanism. This slide shows an example of a two-step reaction mechanism for the decomposition of ozone gas. The overall reaction involves two molecules of O3 forming three molecules of O2, but this doesn't happen in a single step. Two elementary steps are involved. In the first step, an O3 molecule forms an O2 molecule and an atom of oxygen. And in the second step, an O3 molecule combines with that atom of oxygen to form two O2 molecules. One thing to note before we dig in here is that the overall reaction must be the sum of the mechanistic steps, or put another way, the mechanistic steps must add up to the overall reaction. If that's not happening, there's something wrong with our mechanism or potentially with the overall reaction. Perhaps the overall reaction isn't balanced, for example. Within the mechanism, we can recognize the oxygen atom as a reactive intermediate. It's produced in the first step and consumed in the second. So it's not a reactant, and it's not a product, it's made in the middle of the mechanism and consumed before the products are formed. We can also notice the kinetic information in the mechanism in, in the form of these rate constants K1 and K2. We won't always have these handy as numbers, and quite often they're just listed qualitatively with the words fast and slow to indicate which step is faster and which step is, is slower, that sort of thing. But the rate constants in the kinetic information is important and can be highly useful for understanding how quickly each step proceeds. Now, we previously noted that the rate laws for chemical reactions generally have to be measured. But the cool thing about elementary steps is because they involve a single collision and are minimal to that whole treatment of collision theory that we saw in the last video, their rate laws follow theoretically from collision theory. So the rate law, for example, for an elementary step involving the collision of A and B is the rate constant times the concentration of A to the first power times the concentration of B to the first power. These exponents on the A and B concentration terms do match the stoichiometry of this elementary step, 1A plus 1B. And more generally, if, for example, two A molecules are involved, well, an A squared term is going to appear. So kinetic orders for an elementary step actually do follow from the stoichiometric coefficients in the elementary step. And I have to emphasize, this only holds true if you know you're looking at an elementary step, for example, in the midst of a mechanism. The stoichiometric coefficients in 
the chemical equation for an elementary step are known as the molecularity of a species for that step. So for example, in the one we have here, the molecularity of A is one, and the molecularity of B is one, since we have one molecule of each involved in the step. Now, the last point we've seen previously, kinetic orders for a multi-step reaction may not equal the stoichiometric coefficients, and this is because the molecularities in the rate determining elementary step may not match the stoichiometric coefficients in the overall balanced equation. And the upshot of this is that rate laws must be measured as a result. They can't just be inferred from the overall balanced equation. For example, if we return back to the reaction of ozone, decomposition of ozone, in the overall reaction, the coefficient on O3 is two. But notice that in each of the individual elementary steps, only one O3 molecule appears on the reactant side. So for example, if the first step is the one that drives the reaction rate, is what's called the rate determining step, then we'll expect the kinetic order of O3 to only be one, because only one molecule of O3 is involved in that step. This is an example of why the measured rate law will differ from our expectation based on the balanced chemical equation. Now what we're going to do is survey the possibilities for molecularity, starting with a unimolecular elementary step involving just one molecule of A forming products. We already know the differential rate law is K times the A concentration to the first power, since we know we're dealing with an elementary step here. And an example we actually just saw on one of the earlier slides, one molecule of O3 decomposing to form O2 and an oxygen atom. Another example that's shown here is the decomposition of cyclobutane to form two ethylene molecules. This is unimolecular because only one cyclobutane molecule is involved on the reactant side. Bimolecular elementary steps may have a form like A plus B going to products or 2A going to products, and the corresponding differential rate laws are shown here, making this point again that if we know the form of the elementary step, we can use the stoichiometric coefficients in the elementary step to infer the differential rate law for that step. And so an example of a bimolecular step would be the combination of an O3 molecule and an oxygen atom from the ozone decomposition mechanism we've seen, or the combination of an NO2 molecule and CO. So the overall step is bimolecular. We could say that the step is unimolecular in each of those reactants might be another way to put this. Although they're rare, in some cases we can observe termolecular steps in which three total molecules are involved. For example, A plus B plus C going to products, or 2A plus B, or 3A going to products. And these are extremely rare because they depend on three molecules colliding at once or in a very short time frame, which is highly, highly unlikely for entropic reasons. But examples might be, for, for instance, two NO molecules reacting with one O2 molecule. The overall molecularity is three, three molecules total, and it's bimolecular in NO and unimolecular in O2. Try writing the rate laws for these example reactions uh, on your own, these example elementary steps on your own, using the stoichiometry of the step. 